This is how to set up your Raspberry Pi using all the latest and greatest tools. I've always been fascinated by these single board computers, and in this video, I'm gonna show you what they can actually do. First, we'll set up a website locally on our Raspberry Pi using Nginx. Finally, I'm gonna download Pi-hole and turn this little guy into a network-wide ad blocker. And at the end, I'll explain whether I think Raspberry Pis are ultimately worth it and show you some of the projects I built out like a license plate detection system using a machine learning model and how I even managed to earn money mining Monero cryptocurrency on my Raspberry Pi. With its super low key profile, Raspberry Pi Zero introduces a number of new possibilities when it comes to computing. For example, a small group of elite hackers at the University of San Diego secretly hid Pi Zeros throughout their campus library and then utilized the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chips to scan for radio signals. They were then able to count the number of students in the library and then they created an app to allow the entire student body to track how busy the library was at any given point in time, effectively creating the ways for college campus libraries. A plus for ingenuity, F for creepiness. But there's a problem. Due to recent supply chain issues, Raspberry Pis are more elusive than a McRib sandwich right now. Prices on secondary markets are currently in excess of 400% list prices. So you might have to dish out a bit extra to acquire your device until that shortage is resolved. You can use this cool app to locate a Raspberry Pi device. So for those coming in cold, a Raspberry Pi Zero WH is a single board computer smaller than a credit card. This little thing is a feat of engineering. And what's amazing about it is it only costs $10, which is an insane value. See, Raspberry Pi is a nonprofit foundation funded voluntarily by mostly big tech companies like Google and Microsoft. As a result, they usually run their margins at break even, resulting in dirt cheap prices for the consumer. Now, over the last year, there have been global chip shortages which have driven up prices, but hopefully they come back down at some point. Our pies are often touted as an accessible entry point for children to learn more about programming, but in reality, it's often used by hobbyists to build out smart appliances for residential or commercial purposes. This figure here shows the anatomy of the Raspberry Pi Zero. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is install Raspberry Pi OS on our micro SD card. Now I'm using a 32 gigabyte micro SD card and I'm going to connect it to my computer using a micro to SD adapter. Okay, so now we can see the micro SD card is showing up as boot. So let's go ahead and download Raspberry Pi Imager, which is the software we use to write the operating system to the micro SD card. Okay, so I'm coming over to raspberrypi.com. We're going to go to software and then I'm going to download Raspberry Pi Imager for Mac OS and we will install this real quick. Okay, so once we download Imager and install it, we're going to open it up. And the Raspberry Pi Zero WH that I'm using is a 32 bit CPU. So we're just going to install the standard uh, Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit operating system. So we'll just go ahead and select the 32 bit OS and then we're going to select our micro SD card, which is in my case a 32 gigabyte. And then we're also going to set up SSH and Wi-Fi. So let's click this advanced menu here. We're going to do enable SSH and we'll set a password and we're also going to configure Wi-Fi. So one little caveat is it can only connect to 2.4 gigahertz frequency uh, Wi-Fi connections. And I'll show you like where you might be able to check that out. And if you're not sure about that, you can go to your Wi-Fi uh, router page, the admin page, and you can take a look at your LAN connections. So what I did was most new routers have dual bands. I just turned off five gigahertz so that it would automatically connect to the 2.4. And then later, if I want to turn on, turn back on five gigahertz, I can do that. And I'm just going to give it my Wi-Fi password and we'll give it a country code or we'll just set local settings. And then we should be good there. I'm going to go ahead and select right. Okay, so that just finished up. So we can go ahead and remove the SD card and insert it into our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I'm going to take this out. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and power this on. Okay, so there's different ways to power this thing, but I'm just gonna use a USB cable. So I'm gonna plug this into the power source, and then we're going to plug it into the port marked power. And we should see that green light indicating that it's booting up. 
Okay, so now when we go to our router's admin page and then go to connected devices, we can actually see the Raspberry Pi showing up here. So if we wanted to, we can um, ping our SSH to the IP address directly, or we can use the host name raspberrypi.local. Shouldn't make a difference. So let's go over to the terminal. And just to make sure that we can connect, let's just do Raspberry Pi, ping raspberrypi.local. And we can see that it's returning ICMP traffic, which means that it's on the same network and it's accessible by the host name. So let's go ahead and SSH. Uh, but before I do that, I want to clear out all the known hosts I have because they are going to clash. Um, so I'm going to do Vim on this folder here. And I'm just going to delete all these and save that. And then what I'll do is SSH pi at raspberrypi.local. And we're going to do yes for a new fingerprint. And then we're going to provide the password that we set up in the advanced configuration when we were writing the operating system. And so now we can see we are logged into our uh, Raspberry Pi 32-bit operating system. And so I'm going to elevate myself to root by doing sudo sudo dash. And I guess just as a little quick example of what you can do here is let's set up a web server. I'm going to do apt get install and I'm going to use my favorite web server software nginx. So using aptitude we're going to download nginx and it's actually going to stand up a very basic website as it installs itself. Okay so nginx is installed and we should be serving up a website on localhost now so if I do curl localhost yeah we get back uh, html right because there's a website here now. So what that means is if we were to externally ping the Raspberry Pi device, and we can do it by the host name or we can do it by the IP address right here, then now we'll get a website. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go directly to uh, the IP address and now you can see this is the HTML for the website, right? Now we should also be able to do raspberry um, raspberry pi dot local right because that should resolve to the same uh, IP address okay right so you can you can access it via the IP address or or the host name and just to prove that we are in fact uh, the owners of that uh, website we're gonna go to the directory the directory that houses the uh, HTML so I think it's um, var dub 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 HTML right okay so that's the index file right here right so um, I don't have a way to edit it so let me install vim real quick Okay, so we should have Vim installed now, so I can do Vim. Then I'll open up that index file. Then what we'll do is we'll just swap out some of this text here. RPI zero web server. And then I'll just go ahead and save that. And so you can see that is our website. So we could serve up like a local application that's only available on our Wi-Fi network. So that's pretty cool. Let's set up Pi-hole, which is a network-wide ad blocker. And the way this works is we are going to have our DNS resolve through our Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is going to have a list of advertisement origins that it will automatically block. So once we have the Pi hole set up, every device on our network is going to proxy traffic through the Raspberry Pi. And if requests are made to advertising and marketing technology, origins, it will block those requests, resulting in an ad free experience. Okay, and in order to make this work, we need to uh, modify this configuration file here, dhcpcd.com. So I'm going to use Vim, which is the same program that I just downloaded. It is a text editor. You could also use uh, Nano or what have you. Um, but we're going to open up this file here. And if you're using Ethernet, then you're going to want to uh, uncomment this line here, but we're going to use Wi-Fi, so we're going to we're going to um, put LAN in there instead of Ethernet. So the interface is going to be WLAN zero. So we're going to do WLAN zero, and then we need to give our Raspberry Pi a static IP address. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the same IP address that we already have assigned, but we're just going to force it to be the static IP address. Um, and we already pulled that over here, so I'm just going to grab that here. If you don't have it, you can just run the command hostname i when you are in your device. We're going to throw that in here. We'll get rid of the protocol and the path. We're not going to use IP6, so don't worry about it. Um, and then we want to get the IP address of our router. So I'm going to come over to my router's IP, uh, admin page here and we're going to go to advanced wireless wireless settings okay and we're going to use the LAN IP address of the router so we're going to grab this and these are pretty generic so it might actually already be in there so I'll come over here and we will remove the comment and then just swap out our IP address although it might be the same exact one uh, anyways, we'll throw it in there. And then we need the static domain name server, which in my case is the same as the router IP address. So let's get rid of this guy here. And then I'm 
dress because I don't think that's necessary. So let's chop this off and just leave this as is. So you can see these guys are the same and that's as expected. This is our Raspberry Pi static IP address and we should be good. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and save that. And now we're going to reboot our Raspberry Pi. So we should be able to just run reboot and that's gonna kick us off our uh, terminal session here. And we'll give the Raspberry Pi a second to uh, reboot. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi is back up. So let's log in using SSH Pi at raspberrypi.local. And we're gonna download Pi Hole. So I'm gonna do sudo su dash. And let's download the Pi Hole package. Okay, we use wget to download this guy here. And then we're gonna use bash to execute it. And this may take a little while. Okay, so let's step through this. Okay, so we already set up our static IP address and we're gonna use the Cloudflare DNS. Okay, so Pi-hole is installed and we're gonna wanna just take note of the password that it spit out to us because we're gonna use that to log into the admin page. Okay, so we just rebooted the Raspberry Pi. We can ping it. So the admin panel should be up. So let's try to go to that. So we're gonna do uh, the IP address and then we're gonna do forward slash admin. And now this is where we wanna pop in the password that was presented when we first installed it. Okay, so as uh, device traffic routes through the pie hole, it's gonna show up here and you can see nothing is routing through currently. So the way we get all of our network traffic to route through here is we go to our router admin page and then we're gonna to go to advanced and then we're gonna to go to DHCP server and then we're gonna put the Raspberry Pi IP address as the primary DNS. Okay, so we're gonna remove the default gateway and change the primary DNS to the Raspberry Pi, and then we're gonna reboot. I'm gonna save it, and then I'm actually gonna reboot my router. So that was saved, we're gonna go to system, and then we're gonna go to reboot. Once we reboot, everything should route through the Raspberry Pi. And now we can see a little bit of activity here. Okay, so it doesn't actually show the exact requests that are blocked, I'm sure it's somewhere in here, but it does show uh, this number here, and that's gonna keep increasing um, over time, right? Like if, if we refresh this, then this number should pop up right just 55 56 so so traffic is now routing through our our pie hole okay so i i added a couple extra ad lists here and now i'm going to just update the ad list here okay it looks like it was updated successfully um so okay this is the big litmus test can we get all these ads to disappear moment of truth Okay, and now when we go to speedtest.net, you can see all the ads have been removed. They have been blocked. And we should be able to see something in the network panel here. Let's check this out. So, because the client should still request the ads. This got blocked, this got blocked, this got blocked. Um, so the pie hole is working and we can see, um, we can see activity, right? And we can see the percentage of blocked uh, requests. We can see the domains that are getting blocked. Ad service, Google Tag Manager, Safe Browsing, etc, etc. This little Raspberry Pi is now blocking ads on for all devices on our network, which is really pretty interesting. If you want to take your Raspberry Pi adventure to the next level, then check out this video showing how I created a license plate detection system using a deep learning model on my Raspberry Pi. Anyways, thanks for watching.